Hey everyone, it's Sharonda from Hey or Wait, and today I'm going to be reviewing First Kill, which is currently streaming on the Netflix platform. This series is actually based on the short story by V.E. Schwab and it stars Sarah Kathleen Hook, Amani Lewis, and Elizabeth Mitchell as falling in love is a little tricky for our leads, Juliet, our lead characters Juliet and Calliope. One is a vampire and the other is a monster hunter as they are both ready to make their first kill. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, hello, so glad you came, I hope you stay. I'll tell you what I liked about the series, what I didn't like about the series, and is it worth your time or not binging the first season of First Kill, which is now playing on Netflix. So going into what did I actually enjoy about this series, for anyone who watches my channel, you know that I have a soft spot for fantasy, especially you can meet some vampires and other monsters. What? I was in heaven, y'all. I had a good time while watching this. That, that, that's not to say that I didn't have any issues and I'll get into that a little bit later, but I love the world that they created for us to fall in love with. Um, it's very interesting that, and this isn't a spoiler, and honestly, it's already streaming, so y'all should have already watched it in the first place. But I love that we ex this series exists in a world that actually knows about monsters. I thought that was really interesting to bring something that's in modern times where people actually know that monsters have existed, they just might not have been around currently. And I thought that's such an interesting thing to play with. You know, how do you make sure that you're conforming to society as like a functioning regular human adult while holding the secret that, you know, you're a monster hunter or you're a vampire? What does that look like? And I like how that played out with while watching First Kill. And I love that we have this Romeo and Juliet um, dynamic of Juliet and Calliope, these two different families who should be sworn enemies, but these two teens somehow find themselves connected to one another and who have fallen in love with each other, with each other and to see how that affects the dynamics within their own respective families, but to also see how that affects how their relationship will play out. I think I love Sarah Catherine Hook. I really like her as Juliet. There is an innocence to her character, even though she is this vampire who is supposed to kill in order to survive. Um, I love that she kind of is different from the rest of her family. She doesn't necessarily fit in, nor does she necessarily agree with, you know, their history as vampires on what they have to do to survive. And I like this dynamic of, you know, also, too, within their family, the women are at the center of power. It's the matriarchal society. It's not the patriarchy like we're used to. And in this world, this is where women take the lead. And we actually get to see a lot of strong female characters throughout this series, not only with um, Juliet's side of the family, but also, too, with Calliope. Y'all, we got a black monster hunter! I'm not gonna... Hunt. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me say that again, y'all. We got a black monster hunter family. I just never thought I would see the day. I never thought that I would see the day where I saw people with do-rags on killing monsters. I I got emotional. I got emotional when I saw the do-rag. When I saw the do-rag, I was just like, I feel seen. Like, that's me. If a monster came out, I'm going to have a bonnet on and I'm still going to kill the monster while protecting my hair. I'm just saying. I know y'all probably like, Sharonda, why are you like this? Why, why did that stick out to you? This, these are the moments, those are the little things when representation matters, okay? When I see a black family playing dominoes in a vampire monster hunter show, that's the stuff that gets me choked up, y'all, okay? And that's the stuff that we're seeing. An actual black family with a good black mother and daughter dynamic, which I was like, you know, you be watching stuff and black characters do stuff where they talk to their mama a certain way. You just like, nah, I know good and well that this would not happen in real life. And they actually took that into consideration. It was something Juliet was saying to her parents. I said, baby, baby, you can say that. And she's she telling, telling him, uh, telling Calliope, like, you know, just say this. I said, sweetie, you can't, no, her mama black, you can't do that. And it actually makes sense. Like the stuff that they say, the interactions between the different families, it actually makes sense. And I really love that they took time and care to make sure that it was reflective of most families. I was that was a joy for me to see but I love the mother daughter dynamics in both families but most importantly I just love the representation of actually seeing a black family intact a black family with their mother and father with a good brother sister bond that we see through all of our characters and really just a family that uplifts uplifts their children for greatness 
Now, I ain't gonna say they get it right all the time while watching the series, but I was like, I was really happy to see how all of these different dynamics actually play out. Um, now, what I will also say is, like I said, with the world building, I actually did like the world that they built. I do feel as though it could have been a little bit more, but I, like I said, towards the end of the season, I was like, you know what? I need to see how the rest of this is going to play out as they go into kind of the different steps and the different um, classes that they have within the vampires or with the monster hunters. I was like, I actually want to learn more. Um, and I like the little teenage romance. Y'all know I love me some good teenage drama. Okay, I'm here for the drama. I'm here for the romance. You remember when everything was life or death? You had butterflies in your stomach when you fell in love with someone. I actually like that. And the fact that we have queer characters front and center, queer women who are still strong, who still have, you know, there are other things that are going on with these young women, other issues that they have to explore, dynamics with their friends and their family. And I just like that we actually get to see that play out, but they actually just, it's not like they over, how am I trying to say this? You know, and I always say that they're checking a box. I never felt like they were just checking a box. It was like, yes, these are queer women and they're in love with each other, but that's not necessarily what the show is about. It's more than just that. And I love that there were more complex dimensions to their characters that we actually got to see on screen. Now, even though there are so many things that we I loved about this series, there are a couple of, couple, couple, couple of issues, a couple of issues that I need to talk about. And what I will say is, it felt like there are some things that happened in the beginning of the season that we never come back until the end. And it doesn't really make sense to me. I can't delve deep into it, but it kind of goes into the storyline with Juliet's grandmother and kind of her storyline to how it ends at the end of the season one. I was just like, realistically, if this person is who you say they are and this happened to this person, then there's no way that nobody would have said anything for the entire season until the very last episode. That just didn't make sense to me. And also, too, I'm I'm gonna catch some flag for this, but I don't care. I'm just gonna speak the truth. I say this all the time, and I have to keep saying it. I just feel like that's my job to say it. I feel what I'm seeing is a trend. And when we see characters or we see series or movies where there is a POC lead character, that they always have to have a white love interest. And I don't necessarily understand why we keep doing that. And I've definitely been saying this, especially when it's queer characters. I don't know why they feel like something still has to be centered within the white gaze for audiences to be able to connect and actually enjoy. And I don't think that it would have bothered me as much with the two lead women. But the problem was, even with the side characters, everybody was in a relationship with a like if you were a plc character you were involved with like another white character and i just don't know how that made me feel especially because this this series does take place within the south not to say that there's not interracial couples here but it started to just happen a little bit too much that makes me very uncomfortable so i did feel like i needed to say that now i could bring up the effects too <laughs> y'all know them effects didn't look right. Netflix, y'all was really disrespectful for whatever effects budget that you gave them. Y'all are very disrespectful for that, but I'ma let it slide, cause it's the first season, okay? So we gonna manifest in season two, and we gonna manifest that they gonna be like, hey guys, we did you really dirty for season one. With how the monsters look, we know we going to hell for it, but we gonna go ahead and give you a new budget for a, a higher budget for season two. So like, you know, they can look like monsters and not like, like, it looked like the computer characters from the 90s when you played the games, that's what the monsters look like. But we, we gonna let this live. We gonna let this live because I still enjoyed the series. I had a good time. I did fall in love with these characters. I fell in love with um, our two leads of the series. Do I necessarily believe that they have the full chemistry with one another in the real world? I don't know if I believe it, but because I love these two, um, because I love these two characters, because I love the actresses portraying them, I'm gonna go ahead and go with it. But for me, overall, even though it was a little rocky for the first season, I think with a couple of just little tweaks, I think that this can be an even better show than what I've already seen on screen. So what I would tell you to do with your, your time, if you have not watched First Kill, stop playing, go and binge it. It's the quick, I think it's like either, it's like, 
either eight or ten episodes, but they're like quick episodes to get through. You're gonna get your entire life. You're gonna fall in love like I did. And you're gonna be asking for a season two, so that's all that matters. So those are my thoughts on First Kill. As always, my name is Sharonda from Payer Waits, and if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3,000. And until I see you again, 